Thank you for joining us for another lesson from God's Word. The Streetsboro Church of Christ is located at 1386 Russell Drive, Streetsboro, Ohio, 44241. If you're ever in the area, we hope that you'll stop in and worship with us. We hope that you'll enjoy this lesson brought to you by our minister, Ralph Price. I want to start our lesson out this evening by just reading a passage from Matthew chapter 26. We're going to start at verse 69. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. Excuse me. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. We all know the account of how Peter denied our Lord three times, how the Lord had predicted that that would occur. And we sympathize with Peter, in a sense, because we understand he was in a difficult situation. Uh, his master had been arrested, and initially he had tried to defend his master, but uh, Jesus rebuked him for that. And now he's surrounded by the enemy, and he undoubtedly was fearful for his life, that if they identified him as one of the followers, one of the disciples of Jesus, that perhaps his life would be in danger as well. So he denied that he knew the Lord. But what I find interesting and um, applicable to our lesson tonight is what is said in verse 74. And that is that when Peter wanted to distance himself from the Lord... When, pe when Peter wanted people to believe that he did not know Jesus, he began to curse and swear. And that's an important thought for us as we strive to live a life of obedience to our Heavenly Father. We strive to be a light to those around us. I would suggest to you that we make it very, very difficult on ourselves if our speech contains cursing and swearing because even the world knows that a Christian shouldn't talk like that. So this evening what I want to do is, again, we're studying sins of the tongue and eventually we're going to talk about the proper use of the tongue. But as we're talking about sins of the tongue, we're going to think about profanity, cursing, uh, this evening. So we're going to start out with some definitions. First of all, the definition of the word profanity is blasphemous or obscene language. Blasphemous or obscene language. Blasphemous means hurtful speech. Obscene means offensive or disgusting by accepted standards of morality and decency. The word profane, from which we get the word profanity, the definition of profane is a person or behavior that is irreverent, to treat with irreverence or disrespect. So to be irreverent is to show a lack of respect for people or for things that are generally taking, taken seriously. And profanity often proceeds from or proceeds from a profane person, a person who doesn't take things seriously as he should. As Christians, we're to be reverent. We are to always try to show the proper respect for God and his word. A Christian who uses profanity uh, is not obeying the teachings of Christ and is thus showing a lack of respect for God and for his fellow man because profanity 
Even though it is widespread in our world today, profanity offends and upsets a lot of people when it is used. So I want to think about profanity in the Bible. What exactly does the Bible tell us about curse words, about cussing, if you will, or profanity? And you may run across some people, and I actually remember um, running across individuals who, who really believe that the only type of speech that was forbidden was taking God's name in vain. Okay, they, you know, they understood or they, they, they agreed that you know, using God's name in vain was wrong, but that they, in their mind, in their opinion, any other word was okay, that there were no words that would be forbidden. And one of their arguments was, where does the Bible say that that word is wrong or that that word is sinful in order to say? Why doesn't the Bible give us a list of bad words? And I think if we stop to think about it, we understand why the Bible doesn't give us a list. There are several reasons the Bible doesn't give us a list of words that are considered profane or cursing. Number one, words come and go. Uh, some words are curse words today, which were not curse words many years ago. There are some words, for example, in the King James Version of the Bible that you wouldn't use um, in everyday conversation because when the King James Bible was translated originally in 1611, those words were not um, considered curse words, but we wouldn't really use those words in our speech today. We would, I would be embarrassed to use some of those words um, also, um, if that being the case that words come and go and, and that list, if God did give us some kind of list, would need to be updated then every decade or so because new words come and, and old words pass away. And then also thinking about it, obviously, if God were to give a list of words, he would have to give us a list of words in every spoken language. Think about it. Uh, every language has their set of words that are considered profane or curse. So if we stop and think about it, though, we know what words are bad. We know the words that offend people. We know the words that are considered curse words. The Motion Picture Association knows what words uh, are curse words. And when they are rating movies, they take that into account. And if there are... Uh, I don't know what the threshold is, but if there are a certain number of these bad words, you know, the movie will get a, a higher or a, a, a worse rating. And so if, we, if we're honest, we know what these words are. But even though the Bible doesn't give us a definitive list, you know, these are the words that you shouldn't use, the Bible does give us some definite principles uh, to use. And I want to think about that for a couple minutes here. First of all, the Bible warns us about using filthy language, filthy language. In Ephesians 5 and verse 4, Paul says, Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. So in, in um, regulating our speech, he talks about no filthiness, foolish talking, coarse jesting. The word filthiness if you look up the word, it just means obscenity, things that are obscene or filthy talking. This is talking about language that then is offensive, language that is disgusting, language that is irreverent. And again, irreverent meaning treating disrespectfully things that should be respected. In Colossians 3 and verse 8, Paul also writes, But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And so, again, uh, even though the Bible does not give us a list of what it considers to be curse words, we know that there are words that are filthy, words that should not be used. And hence, the practice in days gone by where mothers would wash the children's mouth out with soap. If that kind of filthiness is going to come out of your mouth, your mouth needs clean. And so they would often... Um, Use that as a form of punishment. Lewd language is also spoken about in 2 Peter 2 and verse 18. Peter there writes, for when they speak, and he's talking about people who are sinful, people who are outside of Christ. For when they speak 
great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. The word lewd, uh, it means crude or offensive in a sexual way. Crude or offensive in a sexual way. Uh, Lewd language is language that stirs up images of a sexual nature. And we know that there are many curse words that fall into that category. And the Bible warns us about that. The Bible also warns us about using corrupt language. Ephesians 4 and verse 29 Paul says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. The word corrupt, it means rotten or putrid, like you would think of uh, spoiled milk. And again, in giving us these general terms, filthy language, lewd language, corrupt language, the Bible is setting forth principles To where if we are honest, we know what words fall into those categories. And we know that we should avoid those words. And I want to also make a note here. And that is that, you know, we have this idea that there are curse words. There are profane words that we should avoid. But I would argue that, you know, our words, our speech does not need to contain those cuss words, if you will in order for our language to be classified as filthy. Uh, I could, you know, you could talk about something that you shouldn't be talking about, and so it's completely possible for our language, our speech to be profane, our speech to be irreverent, without using a single word that we would classify uh, as a curse word. So we've got to be very careful about our content and what it is we talk about, and not talk about things that are... Well, things we shouldn't be talking about. Filthy things, lewd things, or corrupt things. Again, as we talk about proper use of the tongue, and as we've mentioned a few times already, our speech is supposed to be a speech that edifies uh, with grace, not talking about things that we shouldn't. Now, another aspect of, of foul language, of profanity, is, as we've already mentioned, profaning God's name. That certainly is um, one type of sin that people can make uh, with their speech. Profaning the name of God. So remember, profane means to treat something with disrespect. Or to be irreverent towards something that is deserving of our respect. It is to take that, in, in the case of using God's name in vain, it is to take something that is holy the name of God is holy, and use it in a worldly way, in an empty way, or in a disrespectful way. And so it is a sin to use God's name in that way. Phrases like, oh my God, or just Jesus Christ, said an exclamation, or um, just God, um, exclamation point would be ways that we could use God's name in vain. Now, God has always, throughout all of his dealings with mankind, demanded respect for his name. It was one of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 and verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Again, the word vain um, is talking about using God's name in a way that is irreverent. In Leviticus 18 and verse 21, we read, You shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. By associating God's name with pagan worship, they were profaning His name. To use God's name in an irreverent way like that is to profane it. Jews... The Jews, this is one of the commandments that they they held to pretty well. Um, They respected the name of God so much that when the scribes, and you've heard me say this before, that when the scribes were making copies of the scriptures, they refused to write the name of God with a freshly dipped quill. 
a freshly dipped pen, lest when they were writing the name of God, the letters might smudge. That is how much they respected God's name. Furthermore, um, another, another instance, and another example, is that when they were writing the name of God, a scribe, he would not stop for any reason. Even if a king were to be speaking to him, he was to finish writing the name of God before he acknowledged uh, his king. That is how much they respected the name of God. And so, you know, when we, when we get surprised, when we get angry, whatever it might be, um, and there is that temptation. And I understand that a lot of times when we do that, it's because it's a habit. Uh, it may be, you know, you haven't been a Christian all your life, and that's something you used to do, and it's just a habit you've had for years and years, and it's difficult to break. But if that is a problem that you have, taking God's name in vain, please work on it. Try to stop doing that, because God is offended when we do take His name in vain. Okay. A couple other examples or um, areas that I think we need to just mention. And that is, is that, you know, sometimes we curse without using curse words. Um, and I'm talking about euphemisms. A euphemism, a euphemism is one of those words that you use when you can't use the word you want to use. Okay? They're the milder version of the curse word that you know you shouldn't say. Okay, I don't, even, I don't even need to make a list because you know the words I'm talking about. And those words that are substitutes for the bad words, in and of themselves, they, they don't mean anything bad. But the, the problem is, is that you know and your hearer knows that that is merely a placeholder for the curse word that you really want to say. And so we need to be very careful when we use these euphemisms, these substitute words for the curse words, because again, it brings into the mind of the hearer and probably into your mind the actual word that you mean when you say that. And then um, also we need to be very careful, and this was something that was mentioned to me this morning, and it's a good point. We were talking about gossip and one of the biggest ways that gossip can occur in our society today on the, on the telephones, on the technology. It doesn't have to be spoken verbally to be gossip. And as well, in regard to using profanity, in regard to using God's name in vain, it doesn't need to be spoken in order to be profanity. It's just as bad when we type it as if uh, we speak it. There are numerous irreverent, um, I've, the LOL, whatever those are called, um, LOL on the by if you see it, you know that means laugh out loud, okay? But there are other abbreviations like that um, that stand for things that we shouldn't say. One of them is, OMG, which stands for Oh My God. And that, again, is, is using God's name in a vain way. Even though you didn't, you didn't spell out God's name, you didn't say it, you, the person who has read it has thought it. And you were thinking it uh, when you put it in there. And so we need to be very careful about not only what we say, but what we type. Um, what we type can be just as irreverent, just as profane, just as damaging uh, as what we speak. Whether we're talking about profanity, whether we're talking about gossip, whether we're talking about lies and deceit like we did last week. Um, if it's, even if it's just typed, it's just as bad as if it is spoken. So as we are drawing this lesson to a close... Uh, we need to realize that, um, as we've said in about every lesson, we're going to give an account for the words that we speak. And we, did, we very much do live in a fishbowl. And people are watching us. And if we use language that our Savior wouldn't use, 
then what we are doing is we're hurting our influence. We're going to make it very difficult on ourselves to talk to others about Christ. We also are going to hurt the influence of the church because if that person knows that you're a member of the Lord's church, it's going to give them a bad, a bad taste in their mouth, if you will, in regard to the Lord's church to know that you're being hypocritical and you call yourself a Christian. So you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your own influence, you're hurting the influence of the church. You're endangering your soul uh, when you use that type of language, whether it's profanity or whether it's profaning God's name or uh, in one of these other ways um, with technology and typing things out and saying things through technology that you shouldn't say. It endangers your soul. So stop doing it. And again, the remedy is Repent. Quit doing it. And, and again, I know a lot of it is habit. And, you know, some habits take a while to break. Um, it, it would be nice if when we obeyed the gospel, all of those bad habits just disappeared. Um, that's not the case. That doesn't happen. Sometimes an individual can stop right away, but sometimes it takes some work. It takes great effort. And we need to start putting that effort forth to clean up our speech so that um, we're not hurting our influence and endangering our soul. As we uh, conclude, we want to extend an invitation to all who are here. If uh, you are not yet a Christian, we offer you an opportunity to become one this evening if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Then obey His commands and repent of your sins or turn from them. Confess your faith in Him and be baptized. If you're already a Christian, maybe, maybe this sermon has hit home and, and this, is one, this is a problem that you have and, and you need the prayers of the church, we'd be glad to pray for you. Maybe there's some other sin that is standing between you and God and you need to repent of that and you want the prayers of the church. We'd be glad to pray for you. We encourage you to come as we stand and sing. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, Ralph can be reached at rprice at streetsboroughchurch.org or by calling 330-626-4282. If you would like to learn more about the Church of Christ, we offer free Bible correspondence courses by mail and home Bible studies. We hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Feel free to come visit us. We would love to have the opportunity to meet you.